Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. So for today's video, I have a Pat McGrath haul and you may have seen quite a few of these pop up on your feed recently because everyone's orders from the Pat McGrath and Bridgerton collection seem to have come in in the last few days. Uh, mine actually came in yesterday, which was Monday, January 10th. Uh, and keep in mind that this launched on December 26th, the day after Christmas at 9 a.m. and I ordered within a few minutes of it launching. So it did take a fair bit of time for it to come in. Uh, part of that was due to when Pat McGrath actually sent it out and part of it was due to, I think, USPS or whoever they shipped with. Uh, just snow and weather and all that, you know, normal kind of shipping related issues, I think came into effect. So. It is what it is, but I do finally have it in my collection. And then I also have an order I placed earlier in December, so I will share that with you as well. And uh, as you can tell perhaps from my face, uh, I have some base makeup applied, but I don't have eyeshadow, blush, or highlight. Uh, so I will be demoing some of these products on my face. Uh, so I guess by way of introduction, uh, I am by no means like a Pat McGrath fanatic or stan. Uh, I've purchased a fair number of pieces from her over the last few years. I have one Mothership palette uh, and a couple other smaller palettes that she's released. You may have seen the video I filmed with the blushes when those launched earlier last year, I think. And I've said repeatedly, I think that her lip gloss formula is my favorite. So the lip glosses I'm a huge fan of. The eyeshadows are kind of hit and miss for me. I've definitely purchased more from Natasha Denona in terms of, I guess, what my favorite eyeshadow formula is. Part of that might just be because Natasha Denona has a lower price point with some of her palettes. Her midi palettes are about half the cost of a Mothership palette, and she also has those minis as well, which are only about $25. So a little bit more accessible that way. Uh, I did purchase my first quad from Pat McGrath, as you'll see later in this video. Uh, so I just wanted to put that out there. I know some YouTubers have been criticized for not being objective enough when it comes to this collection, so I just wanted to kind of let you know where I'm coming from. Uh, as far as Bridgerton goes, I have been a huge fan of British period dramas for as long as I can remember since I was a teenager and I watched all of Bridgerton when it launched and I really enjoyed it. It's definitely not a historically accurate show by any means. Uh, you can see that even in just the fashions. The show itself is based on a romance novel, like a Regency romance, uh, which I do enjoy those from time to time as well. I guess what I'm trying to say is I really enjoyed the show, but it wasn't like a novel thing to me in terms of like the type of entertainment I typically consume. Uh, I know it was like the most watched Netflix show ever at the time. Uh, I think since then it's been surplanted. But just to see a mainstream makeup brand, especially one with such high quality products like Pat McGrath, I was definitely excited when I saw the initial imagery and pictures for this launch and it was definitely something I was planning to purchase from the get-go. I actually used the Christmas money that I received from my mother-in-law to purchase it, so I was definitely very excited about this collection. This video is going to be a bit, I guess, rambly, so I hope you're on board with that. Uh, so anyway, so I just wanted to kind of lay some groundwork uh, for my thoughts about this collection. Uh, so like a lot of people have said, it wasn't necessarily the color story of any of these products that really drew me in. It was the packaging and the, you know, collaboration aspect and all that. But I guess what I wanted to start off by saying is that I was a little bit disappointed when I first opened this collection. So I'll, I'll kind of walk through a little bit of why I say that. Uh, but just to show you here, I've already opened some of these boxes. So this is the eyeshadow palette. Uh, it does have some gold foiling, as you can see there. And uh, the B for Bridgerton, uh, so my first name is actually, well, it's Elizabeth, but I go by Beth. Uh, so the B itself is kind of fun for me, just in that aspect. It has the gold foil, it has, you know, the Pat McGrath logo. I'm guessing this is the Bridgerton family crest, uh, I think. And yeah, it says Pat McGrath Labs by Bridgerton, 
Mothership Diamond of the First Water eyeshadow palette. <laughs> I also kind of get a kick out of the fact that it has the Netflix logo on the back. You know, Shondaland was the um, production company that was um, Shonda Rhimes, I think is her name. She was behind Grey's Anatomy, etc. So I'm not going to go too much into like, you know, value and what types of shades are in here. There's a lot of excellent videos out there, especially uh, I think Alicia Archer, Kinky Sweat, um, she did a great video. She has a huge Pat McGrath collection. So I'm just kind of coming to you as, you know, someone who loves makeup, loves the IP behind this, but just my reaction to the actual physical product here. Uh, so the actual palette is cardboard and um, it does have some like foil and like raised Pat McGrath logo. Um, so often I really like the like Pat McGrath imagery that she uses. Um, I've actually thought about buying some of the merch uh, that she has because I think her exterior packaging is always really beautiful. In fact, it's a shame when some of that doesn't actually translate onto the product itself. So yeah, so I knew this was a cardboard package going in um, and when you open it, it has a mirror and it says flawless my dear so I think what stood out to me so I love the embossing you can see that from the like PR photos and everything but I think this was this was a $65 palette and I like that Pat McGrath often gives people like a 10% off discount when they purchase something from a new collection so that at least help soften the blow. This has sold out if you're not aware, but there is a wait list for a restock. So I'm guessing that they will be restocking it, you know, since it seems to have been wildly popular. So at least that's a good thing. But yeah, this was definitely one of those collections where people were expecting it to sell out. It didn't sell out in the first 30 minutes to an hour or anything, but I think it definitely sold out within a day or two. Uh, so I think the people that were really excited about this were able to purchase it uh, when it launched. But I think part of what stood out to me, so you do have the names of the shades on the back like I showed you. Uh, there isn't any kind of shade name or anything on the interior packaging. Uh, it does have this little mirror cover which I'm just going to keep on there. But I think what surprised me the most was that this portion here, the black portion, is a cardboard. And I didn't purchase, there was that I think it was a six pan palette that launched kind of with the Divine Rose collection or inspired by. Uh, so I never picked that up, but I think maybe if I had that, I would kind of have expected something like this just based on what I can see on the website. Uh, the only six pan palette that I had before was this one. This is the Mothership Subliminal Platinum Bronze palette. And this is discontinued. I think I purchased it on a discount at some point. But you can see it has this type of elastic closure, which I don't know, I thought was kind of unique and different. I don't know if this is something that she still does with any of her packaging. It would have been kind of a nice, like, I don't know, early 19th century Regency touch, especially since, uh, you know, you have that whole anonymous Mrs. Whistledown type, you know, gossip column so there is that kind of like writing element to it this kind of you know closure just has a bit of that kind of antique feel to me I don't know uh, but it is actually a magnetic closure so it's not necessary to use this little elastic you can just you know keep it closed with the magnet and then it opens like so so it's a trifold has a huge mirror as you can see there and then this has a clear um, plastic with the names of the shades. I think that is about as good as I can show it on camera. Uh, so you had that and then here maybe I can just put it back over and then you had the shades. Now there's going to be reflection but uh, and then the shades themselves were in this black plastic. So hopefully you can see that that is plastic and not cardboard. 
So when I looked at that picture online, I was expecting it to be plastic and I think changing it from plastic to cardboard, I think it was a decision driven by cost rather than uh, like environmental reasons, which I would understand, but you know, when you have a pallet with magnets and everything, it's not really going to be like recyclable. It has a mirror, so I don't think that's really achieving anything when you do it that way. Uh, and this palette was made in the USA. I think people have said that that other like Divine Rose palette was also made in the USA. This palette is made in Italy, which a lot of people are kind of making a big deal out of. Uh, that palette also has a Blitz Astral shade. Uh, I'll just show you the comparison of the pans. Again, I'm not saying value is good or bad one way or the other. I'm just you know, showing you a comparison. So for a palette from Pat McGrath, again, this was $65. It's pretty, uh, and I like that there's some gold foil on it and everything. Um, it has the shades on the back, so you can still reference them. There's no kind of plastic sheet, but I don't know. I, I haven't touched these shadows yet, so I'll, I'll be playing with them on camera in a little bit here, but again, it just kind of struck me as being a little cheap. Okay, and then I did pick up also from the collection, I got the blush palette and the highlighter in the shade Incandescent Gold 002. So this was a duo. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is accurate. So this is saying it's $52 and the highlighter was $60. Uh, I think there was a slight discount when you purchased these together but I don't think the 10% discount applied because I was kind of confused when I was checking out. Uh, anyway, so I got the blush palette, uh, same similar style of packaging as the eyeshadow palette. And when you open this one, again, it has a very kind of similar look to it. So this has obviously two blushes and a highlighter. Uh, I actually already had two of these shades. Uh, so I had the Cherish and Infet blushes, which you would have seen in my review of these Pat McGrath blushes. So for these, I have kept the outer packaging. Uh, I do like the component of this with a couple of caveats, but it is a very nice sleek plastic that of course has my fingerprints on it. Uh, with most of her products, she has kind of some, I don't know, printed on type, uh, general type language, and then she'll have a sticker for the actual shade. And then this one, you have like a push button and you do have a good size mirror and then that is the shade. Uh, with this blush palette, like with previous blush palettes that she's released, um, you do get less product per blush. So you can see this one is bigger than this one. Uh, this is the shade Divine Rose that I'm holding up. This is not included in the uh, palette, but I just had it. So, uh, but yeah, so I have kept the packaging. I do love her aesthetic when it comes to this outer packaging. It does have the gold foil, really pretty purple roses and everything. Uh, the actual shade is just a sticker, which is fine uh, because obviously it would cost more money to produce entirely unique packages for each um, shade. With a lot of her unicartons and that kind of thing, uh, they do have, I guess, more unique closures. Um, so this one, it's a little bit, I think, easier to just pull in and out. The Unicartons for the Bridgerton collection, and maybe this is another reason why I was a little kind of disappointed or underwhelmed. Uh, they just have your standard type of closure there. And what I often do, pretend this is closed, uh, to preserve the packaging, I'll take a little metal spatula like so and slip it under the, um, the lid there to kind of ease it out so I don't rip it or anything. Um, and I definitely will hold on to this packaging because it's a unique collaboration and everything, but it obviously is a lot easier to use this style of packaging. So it would have been nice if she had carried this over to the Bridgerton collection. Uh, but part of the reason I have kept these boxes, not only are they beautiful and everything, is that with these blushes, these components, other than reading the name of the shade on the back, there's no clear way to identify which color it is. 
So with these, like if you had them in a drawer, if you kept the blush inside the box, uh, you could, I guess, more easily see which color you were reaching for and go that way instead of trying to remember which shade is which. Um, obviously, if you only have one, then it's a little bit easier, but if you do have multiple shades, then it becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, so because of that, even though I already had two of these shades, one, it was the collector mentality, but two, having two shades that I had already purchased and enjoyed in one palette, it's a little bit easier to just reach for one item, open it, and then maybe decide, okay, do I want to go more bright pink or do I want to go a little bit more um, neutral on any given day. So while a part of me wishes maybe she had replaced uh, Cherish, which is the brighter pink, with something a little bit more suitable for my skin tone, uh, I totally understand that this was one product that she was trying to cater to a variety of skin tones. So those are the three shades swatched on my finger. I think that highlight is going to be a little bit too dark on me. Um, we'll swatch some other highlights in a minute. Uh, I can make Cherish work, but I do have to be a little bit light-handed with it. Um, I think Nymphette is a great color for me. I still would like to pick up, I think it's Flirtatious at some point, but uh, I just haven't, haven't felt compelled so far. And part of the reason is because when I see all of these in a drawer, it's a little bit more difficult to um, just pick up what I want. So. I know other people have done this as well, but I'll go ahead and swatch. So the um, full size Nymphette that I have is closer to my thumb and the uh, one in the palette is next to it. And it's looking a little bit kind of more peachy orange maybe on camera than it does to me in real life. I do like that the embossing stays pretty well. It's not a super dusty formula or anything like that. And then there is Cherish um, kind of higher up on my hand and the one in the palette is lower. Hopefully that's focusing. I'm, I've been playing around with the kind of tracking and autofocus on my camera. I think both are pretty identical. I mean, the one in the new palette might be just a tad more like pigmented and brighter and the Nymphette shade might be a tad less peach, but I don't know. I think there might be some subtle differences, but I think it's really kind of splitting hairs. Uh, this palette was, that'll be an interesting question. Uh, this was made in Italy and these blushes were also made in Italy. So it could be the same lab, not really sure. Okay, so that takes us to the highlighter. So like I said, I only purchased one of them. Uh, the gold was just never gonna work on me as far as a highlighter goes. So uh, I decided I didn't need that. And I do like that this has kind of a unique printing on the actual palette. And I'll go ahead and remove this on camera for you. So this is a magnetic closure, which is nice. I do prefer that to the little like push button of these. And uh, it has a nice mirror and of course that gorgeous embossing. So uh, I'll swatch the highlighter in the palette, the blush palette. Again, I know people have done this, but I do think it's helpful with highlighter, especially to see the swatches on um, different skin tones. So, all right, I'm going to swatch kind of to the side here. I do want to actually use this product, not just kind of keep it pristine. So I think this is the highlighter I plan on using the single highlighter. Um, so you can see there's quite a difference there. It's almost like the white highlighter is suitable for fair skin tones. The other one from the blush palette is suitable for like medium to tan maybe. And then the gold would be really beautiful on like rich complexions. Okay, so I'm just gonna let these hang out on my hand for a minute. 
Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the other items that I've purchased from Pat McGrath recently. I guess it's a good thing I only have like six items to talk about, otherwise this would take forever. This highlighter, by the way, does seem to have a little bit more gold in it than I was maybe expecting. I know a lot of people have compared the gold highlighter to the Fenty Trophy Wipe, which is also a gold. But when I swatched this, I thought it looked a little similar to the new Liquid Kilowatt in the shade um, Side Chick. I did a dedicated Fenty video. I mean, I think they definitely have a similar tone. Obviously one is powder and one is liquid, but if you want something with like a white gold type reflect, the Fenty is certainly a lot cheaper. And that is side chick. So yeah, so that's, that's quite interesting. Oh, well, I just removed the swatches. Oh well, <laughs> we'll swatch those again in a minute. Okay, so the other three items I got, um, so one is her lip gloss in the shade Astral Moonflower. So I picked this up because the shade description was something periwinkle and I did a video for the Pantone 2022 color of the year, which is very peri. Um, so I wanted to try out a few lip products with periwinkle type shades uh, and there aren't that many as you can imagine. Uh, again, really quickly, this is another example of her lip glosses having that kind of opening, so they're a little bit easier to open, in my opinion. I think I've even kept some of her like lipstick cases. I, I think they had the same type of packaging as this, with like something that you kind of wrapped around, if I recall. So yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, I thought it might be fun also to swatch this next to this astral blue color. This is Regency Blue. And I know a lot of people have incorporated this into looks that they've done. I'm going to try and create a look that's a little bit different from uh, what a lot of people have done so far. I have watched quite a few reviews. I've watched part of Heather Austin's that just went up. Karen Harris, Alicia, like I said, um, Kinky Sweat. Who else have I seen? Morgan Turner. I think that's all that's leaping to mind. Uh, and some people have commented on the shades in the eyeshadow palette, whether it reflects the Bridgerton TV show. Like I'm glad they put this blue in because I do think of blue a lot when I think of Bridgerton. You have the packaging, but I think it's nice to have an actual blue shade and Having it be like an astral shade that has a little bit less underlying pigment, I think is kind of helpful. You know, some people have kind of said that it doesn't reflect. Um, so this is the lip gloss, by the way, and that's the astral shade from the palette. Uh, that it doesn't reflect the Featheringtons, which are another family um, in the show. And they are typically in yellow, <laughs> like it's, if anyone's been like in theater or anything, uh, you know that color is often used to kind of differentiate different groups of people in costume design. And so uh, with the Featheringtons, I can't remember if it was a plot point in the book. It might have been that uh, I think it was Penelope Featherington's mom always wanted to put her in yellow and yellow always made her look horrible. But anyway, yeah, so they're, they're kind of, the Bridgertons are kind of looking a certain way and then the Featheringtons are kind of looking a certain way. I'm not sure if Pat McGrath will ever do another Bridgerton collection. They have, I think, ordered several seasons at this point. Uh, we have the second season coming out in March and that features one of the um, Bridgerton sons. But you know, there's a lot of kids there to go through. And I think there are books for each of the children as well. So they could keep going for quite a while if they chose to. Um, so I think, without giving anything away. Um, there are later books where the Featheringtons would play more of a role, so maybe, you know, yellow would be appropriate in that collection. I don't know. Okay, so yeah, so like I said, this is gonna be kind of a rambly video. And then with that lip gloss, I did also order two things. I think these were from, I think this was from the holiday collection. I can't remember. Uh, but I think this was like in a set, and they were both like significantly discounted, so I finally picked them up. Um, so I got the highlighter in Lunar Nude, which 
has a very pretty gold compact. Just to compare here, they are the same shape, obviously very different packaging. Um, the blushes are smaller for what it's worth. Um, and this also has, I think, a cover on it, yeah. Yeah, nice magnetic closure on this one. And I think this is where she first introduced this type of embossing. Yeah, but I think this is an entirely plastic component. So that is the Lunar Nude shade. And then I'll compare that to the Bridgerton highlighter, which as you know, has a similar embossing, but it has like the Cupid and then the crown is offset a bit. I almost wish they had centered the crown and then just made the Cupid a little bit smaller, but not my, not my call. I seem to recall like a lot of people, even like um, Teresa's dad talk about the holiday release highlighter um, as being really great for them. Um, and I think Teresa famously calls herself uncooked chicken when it comes to her skin tone, but at least heavily swatched. It might, it might be a tad dark on me. And I think these are the only Pat McGrath highlighters I have. I know she's come out with some in previous years, but again, I, I'm not quite in the weeds when it comes to like differences in formula and that kind of thing, but hopefully that will come across. So we have from you know, my thumb to my pinky. So we have the Bridgerton highlighter, the holiday highlighter, and the Bridgerton highlighter in the palette. So I think there's quite a difference there when it comes to like depth of color and formula and everything. Okay, and then the final product I have to share with you is, like I said, the first Pat McGrath quad I have purchased. Uh, I had purchased this little palette at some point when it came out. This was, I guess, Pat McGrath's version of like the mini palette from uh, Natasha Denona, kind of similar price point and everything. And I wasn't like super impressed with this, so I never really used it that much. Uh, the first and only mothership palette I have is the Divine Rose, uh, which again, this kind of gets back to my point about the blushes. I've not only the price, but I've also been, I guess, a little reluctant to pick up additional palettes because you can't distinguish them easily based on the outer packaging. Maybe I would get Divine Rose 2 in the pink packaging if that was still available at some point, but I don't know. I, I like having this. I mean, it's like a brick. You could cause serious bodily injury with this, but I don't know. I, I, like as an object, it's, it's very aesthetically pleasing. It seems like very luxury, heavy and on that kind of thing. Um, as you'll be able to tell, it does annoy me a little bit that like I cut this, I think out of part of the packaging with the shades. I had to trim it to kind of fit inside the mirror area because the shade names aren't printed with the actual shades. They're not on the back or anything like that. So this is like the only reference that you have. Um, does have a nice beveled mirror and everything. So when I, when I first used this, I never really, I guess, got on with it or like bonded with it or anything like that. Um, at least not in the same way that I have with like the Natasha Denona Glam palette. So I'm not saying I'll never purchase another mothership or anything like that, but I'm certainly not a collector of them. Uh, and because of my experience with the the mothership, the Divine Rose mothership that everyone raves about, I just never was like super enthusiastic about Pat McGrath eyeshadows. But when I went to Sephora during the VIP event back in November, I guess it was, uh, I did happen to swatch the Voyeuristic Vixen quad, which now everyone it seems has put that on their like best of 2021 list. Um, I think that quad actually launched with these blushes, which kind of explains why it was a little bit overlooked. I don't think it was the first quad like that that Pat McGrath had ever released, but these were the first blushes that she had released. Everyone was kind of losing their mind over those. I know people had reviewed it at the time, but especially with only four shadows, I'm a little picky in terms of the color story and what mattes and everything are in there. Yeah, when I swatched it in Sephora a few months ago, it was just one of those like, wow type moments. Uh, and of course it wasn't on the Sephora website 
and it's been out of stock I think for a little while now. If it had been in stock when Pat McGrath had a 30% off sale recently, I would have picked it up. So hopefully I'll be able to pick it up at some point, but yeah, I'm not sure why Pat McGrath just had a 30% off sale when it seems she was having trouble getting those Bridgerton orders out, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, so the, I did end up picking up this palette. This is the Bronze Borealis palette. I think, like I said, it was the first quad, so I, I don't know, I just wanted to kind of play around with it. And after swatching the Voyeuristic Fixin, I kind of gave this another look, I think. So these are, I think, very pretty shades. It has that nice magnetic component. Same size and everything. It's a highlighter, but again, I can kind of keep these separate just based on the outer packaging so that's nice yeah and i think was it tentalia also had this as one of her favorite quads of the year favorite palettes so it's a little bit dark i think for like an everyday look for me but i think it'll still be a really pretty quad to play around with so yeah okay so i think that's enough yapping here okay so like i said i've already done my base I've already applied eye primer um, and I've set it with some powder as well. I did use the Pat McGrath Sublime Concealer in the shade L2. Again, I've had that concealer for a while, but I never totally fell in love with it. Uh, I also used the Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder, which again, I think is fine, but <laughs> never really totally blew my mind. Okay, so with that all being said here, so I'm gonna remove this plastic. And unfortunately, I think I might have to destroy that cameo, which is sad because I do enjoy that embossing. There's two Bs, but only one cameo. All right, so I think I'm gonna start off with this little Sonia G Mini Booster. Uh, and I'm gonna dab around the outer edge here. So we'll see how this does. For my birthday present to myself, uh, there's something called the Queen's Ball, which um, I think it's the same company that did the, there was like a Van Gogh type event, like you could go and it was like you were inside a Van Gogh painting, I think. Uh, I think it's Fever is the name of the company. Uh, but anyway, they are, having an event called the Queen's Ball, where I think they're trying to like recreate a Regency era, it's, it's like a Bridgerton branded experience. It's not just kind of something random, but uh, they're trying to recreate a Regency ball. I don't know, there's gonna be music and dancing and all that. So that's coming to the DC area in late March, early April, something like that. Like I said, I bought tickets for my kind of birthday present to myself. And I guess my husband's birthday present to me is going to be that he's going with me without complaining too vigorously. So hopefully the numbers and everything are kind of not too scary at that point. So I guess off the bat here, talking about the color story, like it's different and I appreciate it, but you know, for someone with my skin tone, I almost need, I don't know, like a lighter matte. I'm taking that same shade underneath. All right, let's see what I have in this palette that I just, this is another kind of plummy color. I'll go ahead and swatch this next to this shade carefully. I think the one in the bronze palette is maybe a tad more brown. Yeah, I think the one in the Bronze Borealis is a tad more brown, maybe even lighter than the one in the Bridgerton palette. Okay, well, because I don't have another matte to work with and I kind of wanna, I don't know, give you a true reflection of the palette, I'm just gonna take the powder and just kind of work to lend that color out a little bit. This is the most ridiculous mirror in this little compact. I'm not sure exactly what good it does. Yeah, and on my skin tone, I typically wouldn't 
go in with a crease color that dark, at least without putting down a transition shade first, but I'm just kind of working with what I have here. All right, so I'm going to take a refer number 21 brush and go into this shade, which is Duchess Divinity. I think the first shade was called Plum Regalia. So this is a dry brush, so we'll see. Okay, that, that does apply very well with the dry brush. I'm doing my makeup over kind of not completely fresh skin. Like I went out earlier today with sunscreen and that kind of thing. So I opted to just go ahead and do my base before I start talking to you. So I think that's really pretty. And that was just a dry brush. So I'm going to flip it over and go into this shade, which is, so I say, I think I say ingenue. I've heard all kinds of interesting pronunciations of this word. <laughs> Not sure what is correct. So this to me, maybe this is what I should have used as like a crease shade. It's not quite as metallic as I would like. I don't think it's really meant to be. It's more of a satin. I mean, maybe if you really like this kind of color for a brow bone, could do that. It's not really the best type of brush for a brow bone highlight. But anyway, what I was saying was that when I go to that Regency ball, uh, I thought it would be fun to wear makeup from this collection. So I was kind of thinking, well, maybe I could just use some of the more neutral shades. So it wasn't quite so in your face, like that very obvious blue and pink. I am curious about the artistry wand. So that kind of shimmer doesn't really do anything. I should have just used that to kind of blend out. So I wet my brush with some of the Tarte Maracuja Miracle Mist, and I'm just gonna go in to that Duchess Divinity shade again. And I'm just gonna go ahead and go all, all in. I am getting fallout. Maybe I tried to, to load my brush up too much. It might have applied better with just a dry brush actually. I just saw a look that um, Charlotte Holcroft did with one of the Mothership palettes. I forget which one it was, but it was really beautiful. And it, again, it wasn't a palette that I'd really kind of ever looked twice at, but I thought it looked really beautiful on her. Okay, so I'm gonna go into that Blitz Astral shade on my finger and just see what happens. That's what it looks like, just kind of tapped. I think I almost just prefer the Duchess Divinity shade on its own. And now I have like loose sparkles. I'm a little curious if I take like a rougher, uh, what is this, number three brush, which is just a little pencil brush. And I was thinking I might do this to begin with, so. Okay, so I am going to hop off camera and do my liner and mascara, and then I will be back for the blush and the highlighter. Okay, so we're back. So I, I started to use a pixie eyeliner, but it wasn't transferring as well as I wanted it to, so I ended up using the Makeup by Mario eyeliner in the shade Perfect Brown, and I used the Clinique Bottom Lash and the Tarte Lights Camera Splashes. Okay, so I thought it might be interesting. I know I showed you these swatches earlier, but uh, I thought it might be interesting to use the full size Nymphette on one cheek and the uh, Bridgerton palette on the other. Uh, so I'm using the Refer number five brush, which is my favorite blush brush. And you can see it picks up a decent amount of pigment there. Okay, so that is the full size and going into the palette here. 
just use the opposite side of the brush. And of course, there's no way to be like completely scientific in terms of how much I'm picking up. I think that's about even. So yeah, so on fair skin tone, I think that's a really pretty natural blush. So let's go in with some highlighter. So uh, I guess I'll start off with this guy. I'm using the Anastasia A23 brush. So yeah, very pretty, very reflective, but it does have a bit of a like yellow gold cast to it, which to be honest is not kind of my, my preference. I think I lean more cool than anything. All right, so I'm gonna try this other one that I picked up just to see kind of how it does on this, on this cheek. I like the tone of this, but I wonder if it might just be a tad dark. And I'm seeing it kind of, I took it in this far, I think, which is, I think, throwing me off a little bit. I don't know, let me know which one you guys like better. So that is the, what is it, Lunar Nude, and that is the Bridgerton. So just to kind of cap it all off here, uh, I thought I would use one of her lipsticks. And I have several. Pat McGrath does really great sales on her lip products, especially around Black Friday. So if you ever have your eye on one of them, I would suggest waiting if you can. Uh, let's see, I might go in with the shade Realness. Or, that's too dark. I do think her lipstick component is really beautiful and eye-catching. I never really fell in love with her actual formula or anything, so it was one of those where so once I had a few, I was kind of like, hmm, that might be good. All right, so I'm gonna use the shade Sextrology. I guess that's appropriate. Although a lot of her shade names are kind of, it's not always the most provocative, but peachy maybe. I don't know if I layer the shade. I was thinking of putting that astral blue uh, shade on top, but I think to maybe keep it a little bit more like pretty, you know? Let's try this shade. This might have been discontinued. This is in the shade Secret Lover. It's a little bit more of like an opaque cream gloss. I probably could have just used this without any kind of lipstick on underneath. I think we'll just call it there. So I hope you guys appreciated this video as an honest and candid, um, not even like review, but kind of like first impressions of this collection. Like I said, I was a little disappointed, I guess both in the shades themselves and the packaging. So it's kind of like what, what's left there. Um, other than like the IP itself and being a fan of it. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't <laughs> judge anyone for, I guess, being sad that they missed out or waiting for the restock. But I haven't seen many people say anything that's like really that negative about this collection. But hopefully you appreciate this video and the thoughts that I had to share. But I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. Uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.